We're spending the day in scenic Marblehead. A short drive over Lake Erie led us to the historic Johnson's Island, former home of a Civil War military prison and the final resting spot for many an imprisoned Confederate officer. It's called the Confederate Cemetery, uh, but it's actually the uh, cemetery associated with the Johnson's Island uh, Civil War prison. David Bush is a chairman of the Friends and Descendants of Johnson's Island. In 1861, when the war started, uh, the Union um, all of a sudden realized that they were getting a lot more captured prisoners than, than they had thought. And so they wanted to construct a prison that could hold all the prisoners that they were capturing. They found Johnson's Island and uh, it didn't have anything except um, a little bit of area cleared by the person who owned it, Mr. Johnson. And so they leased it from him and they built uh, a nice facility here to house about 3,000 prisoners. But by the time it opened up in April of 62, um, they realized that they were gonna capture a whole lot more than the 3,000 that this could hold. So they ended up um, just designating this for Confederate officers. It's kind of, at least, you know, when I first found out about this, it's kind of strange to hear a Confederate cemetery, you know, north. Right, like, right. Where the Union, you know, was located and the Unions and the Confederates obviously fought. So is this kind of like a rare thing around here? Do you get a lot of questions like that? Um, I get I get a lot of questions about the fact that we had a prison here at all. Yeah. You know, and when I first started 30 some years ago, um, it was very uh, rare that you would find somebody who actually knew about the Confederate, um, you know, the Union prison to hold the Confederates here um, in this region. I mean, it was really kind of an unknown resource. It really is pretty impressive and somber being out here, you know, with every tombstone being identical. Do you mm -hmm. know how many um, soldiers are, are buried here, how many tombstones? Well, there's 206 tombstones, the last I counted, assuming nobody's <laughs> taken one with them. Um, and uh, in terms of the number buried here, it's probably around 230. Uh, they were marked originally with wooden headboards, mm -hmm. and the headboards either were vandalized or deteriorated right after the war. And so when the tombstones went in in the 1890s, um, there was, you know, certainly some missing. What are the pennies? What, what do those stand for? I noticed on, on top of some of the tombstones, two or three in, in various spots. Yeah, it's kind of a, just a, a, a symbol, I think, that people put something there to, to honor the people that are buried here. I've seen more pennies today than I've ever seen up here. So. And all those soldiers started here, uh, well, on this location. Not at this gate, but the old military prison that we were referencing earlier. This is it. This is where it was. Yeah, this is where it was, and, and it, it's it's such a unique site because there's so much good archaeological um, things to discover here, and we've we've done you know 30 years of archaeological work here, and probably scratched the surface of what what potentially could be uncovered. You know, if we wanted to continue on, uh, but uh, it's only uh, one of maybe two or three archaeological sites associated with Civil War prisons in the whole United States. Over the years we had we had more students and teachers up here than they had prisoners up here working and discovering the sites. What, what do you get out of that? What kind of joy do you get seeing you know younger kids learn about this history? Um, yeah it's amazing that was the best part of my life up here was that that period of time you know those weeks that we did the experiential program with the middle school and high school kids and what I get out is just sharing the discovery, you know, and, and I would have staff working with me and when a kid would find something that we had never seen before or even something that we had seen but it was like a beautiful piece, you know, they would all gather around my staff and, and, and ooh and ah over this thing as well as I would, you know, and so I think the, the kids got a sense that that's how science is done, you know, science is done through the, the aspect of discovery and then people appreciating that discovery.